Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome on behalf of the whole Zero Project Impact Transfer team. Welcome to the second pitch session of the Impact Transfer participants. Um, I can see some familiar names. Thank you. Some of you have joined the previous session. Uh, and I see some new names as well. So very excited and welcome to all of you for this for this session. Let me start with some brief information concerning accessibility. Um, we should be having very soon sign language interpretation available in the room. And um, you can also access the captioning by um, enabling the show subtitle uh, option in your Zoom menu. Uh, so captioning is provided. Um, we, to avoid any connection issues and make it easier for you to view the speakers properly, uh, we suggest you turn off your video if you are not speaking. And we did allow ourselves to mute everyone in the call just to avoid um, background noise. Um, so I hope you, you will agree with that, but please do use the chat so the chat function in Zoom um, to introduce yourself. You might want to do that right away. Just let us know, you know, who you are, where you come from, perhaps what motivates you to join the session. It would be great to get to know who, who's in the room. And throughout the session, uh, please use the chat to ask questions, comment, share, share feedback. So for um, those who cannot see me, um, I'm a white male. I'm wearing a, a dark or blue suit. Uh, I have a, bear, a beard, I'm in my 40s, and um, yeah, my hair is yeah, not totally gray yet, but I'm uh, getting there. My name is Loïc Van Kutsem. I work for Ashoka, and again, I'm really honored to be chairing this, this session today. I have the immense privilege of uh, leading our impact transfer program with Zero Project, SO Foundation, Fondation Descoubreme, and, and, and many more partners. Uh, and I would just like to quickly thank um, it's your colleague Sumita, who is taking care of the chat today, and, and my colleague Alexander, who is uh, helping with all the, the tech magic in the background. So thanks to both of you. Um, quickly, a couple of words on Ashoka. We are a global NGO, um, and we support social entrepreneurs and change makers um, uh, who have innovative and systemic solution to address societal issues. Um, so we identify them, we select them, and we support them, um, over 4,000 of them in, in, in now 90 countries all over the world, some of which are in this session or in, and in the conference. Um, with several colleagues um, in, in different countries, I co-lead the Impact Transfer Program, which um, aims to accelerate the replication of proven social innovations where they are requested by local stakeholders. Um, so it's really all about replicating what has proven to work and adapting it into new geographies rather than reinventing the wheel um, as when it's possible at least. Um, and with the incredible support of, of ESO Foundation, of Zero Project, of Fondation Descoubreme, um, we run this Impact Zero Project Impact Transfer Program each year now, um, since four or five years. And we support each year 10 Zero Project awardees during a six month period to clarify their replication strategy. Uh, and they will very soon be presenting their work, uh, their replication plans, and how you can support them and can benefit from these solutions. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to uh, welcome Carola Rubia, who's the executive director of Fondation Descoubreme, a dear partner and supporter of this program. Uh, Carola, the floor is yours for welcome remarks. Thank you for being with us. You just need to unmute, probably, or is it not? Um, Alex, can we unmute Carola? Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. You didn't want me to talk, but that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you, Lloyd, for your kind words, and thank you very much uh, for having me here. Uh, dear friends and family of the Zero Project, let me wel welcome all of you to this second impact transfer pitch session. I'm delighted to be here as partners for the third year. Impact transfer 
is one of the highlights of the conference and I wouldn't miss it for the world. But is it, it is a pity we cannot be together in Vienna this year, but we do hope that we can meet again next year. We know the effort that the Impact Transfer team has gone through to make this version of the program the best despite the distance. As some of you might know, in 2017, the Zero Project and Ashoka came together to create the Zero Project Impact Transfer Program. The Zero Project, on one hand, focuses on finding innovative solutions that make life better for persons with disabilities. Ashoka, on the other hand, has many years of experience supporting entrepreneurs and transferring social impact from one context to another. Together, they were able to combine their strengths and create the possibility of bringing proven solutions to new contexts, therefore making real inclusion of people with disabilities. To achieve this, each year the program selects 10 initiatives from all of the Zero Project awardees. These initiatives are trained for six months to identify their needs, goals, and strategy with the support of mentors and partners. By the end of the program, they're ready to replicate their model and can tell their story in a engaging way. At Fundación Descubreme, we were invited to join the first version of Impact Transfers, and since then, we have joined each year. We have seen from the beginning how after completing the program, organizations like yours go back home with a new mindset. They have clear needs, goals, and models. During our more than 10 years of experience working for inclusion in Chile, we have seen similar needs in Latin America. Therefore, in 2018, we have decided to join the program and bring closer the Spanish speaking perspective to impact transfer. We believe that combining the strengths of Zero Project, Impact Transfer, and Fundación Descubreme, we can truly reach further together and continue eliminating barriers for people with disabilities. So far, Impact Transfer has supported 41 projects, and many of them have already started their replication in other countries, thanks to the support of many organizations like you who are watching this speech session. Today, we have already had the pleasure of watching the first project teach their solutions. Now we are ready to learn more from more projects changing the scenario for people with disabilities around the world. I would like to congratulate the projects presenting this year, and we are very excited to hear your pitches after many months of online preparation. Let, let us learn from you and find out how we can continue changing the life of people with disability together. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear Carola, for those kind words and encouraging words also for the program and for the, the projects that we'll be presenting right away. Uh, thank you for your commitment and support. Um, so yes, we're going to take you now on a, on a journey, on a travel, um, where we'll have five presentations and we'll be traveling from Chile to Brazil to Bulgaria to Pakistan and to South Africa, discovering five different inclusive employment and ICT solutions that have evidence of impact in their own context and have developed a strategy to empower partners in other geographies to adapt and adopt these solutions. Um, so this is very much an invitation to the, to the audience, to you who are joining this call to really, indeed, as Carola mentioned, uh, listen to the five presentations, get inspiration and reflect perhaps on which role you could play and how you could benefit from these solutions. Perhaps some of you can provide context or feedback. Perhaps some of you can serve as implementation partners and replicate these solutions. Others might have amazing networks to help these solutions gain more visibility. Um, and some of you might be able to finance and fund uh, part of their, of their work. So welcome to all of you. 
and I look forward to this to this session. Um, you have different options to interact during this session. Um, quick reminder: option one is the chat, obviously, and and you have some of you have started using it. It's fantastic to see you introducing yourselves in the chat. So feel free to again ask questions or share feedback using the chat. Um, the second option is an online form, and we will be posting the link to this online form in the chat. You can simply click on that and it will offer you the opportunity to provide your name and your email uh, and select which project you are interested to follow up with. Um, so in case you would not be able in this session to follow up, this is an opportunity for you to kind of communicate your willingness, your interest to support or at least to continue a conversation with some specific projects and we will be providing them, of course, your, your contact data through that way. Um, after the five presentations, um, which will take four to five minutes each, so it's going to be punchy and quick, um, we really invite all of you to stay in this call. We will be setting up five Zoom rooms, so-called breakout rooms, um, so one room for each project, um, to allow you to continue individual conversations. So indeed, we're not this year able to be physically together, um, but by, by providing the breakout room opportunity, we really hope you will be able in a very informal setting to simply learn more on the projects or continue the conversation and ask more questions. So stay with us after the pitches. We will be providing more information. Okay, well then if all that is clear, uh, we would be heading, I'm just checking if the, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing everyone, but do we have the sign language interpretation uh, with us in the, in the call? Um, we are actually messaging the sign language interpreter right now, so uh, we're trying to figure out where um, he might have jumped on a different call, so we're, we're trying to sort it out right now. Okay, well, thank mm -hmm. you. Apologies yeah. for, that. Apologies for that. Thank you, Sumita and the Zero Project team for trying to do your best for that. Let us know. Um, all right, so without further ado, let's, 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 let's jump on the train. Let's start the travel, and um, we're going to start our travel in Chile with uh, Rodrigo Carvajal, who is the founder and the CEO of Seco Chile. Rodrigo, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Loic. Thank you, uh, Carola. Hello, I am Rodrigo Carvajal, founder and CEO of Seco Chile, an eco-friendly car wash service where most of our workers are people with disabilities. My congenital physical disability made me sensitive towards people who are frequently discriminated. From my own disability, the idea of forming Seco Chile was born. Create a project that promotes inclusion in the labor force. The lack of labor opportunities for people with disabilities in the world is surprising, more in some countries than others, of course. On the other hand, the global water crisis is very serious. In the car wash market, there is, there is an abuse of water consumption and lack of empathy to the environmental damage caused. Are we responsible for the use of, of this resource or we just look to the side? Seco Chile, I'm sorry, there's a, oh, sorry. Seco Chile provides a car wash service using a product that not require the use of water. We are the manufacturer of this product that is made mainly with natural components. At Seco Chile, we promote labor inclusion for people with any kind of disability as long as they are able to wash cars. By not requiring any level of education, it allows us to employ many people who do not have the freedom to choose a job. We have been active since 2010 with a network of 30 franchise partners. We have employed more than 460 people, close to 50% of them with disabilities. Our purpose is to implement through our social franchise model a seco ecological car wash service, thus helping to protect a vital natural resource 
including the use of our innovative product. And our most important value include people with disabilities. We usually receive testimonies from clients and from our workers too. Such is the case of Diego in the picture, who despite having Down syndrome, he dreamed with cars since his childhood. Today, Diego is a happy second worker who can bring financial support to his home and feel his dream come true. Those kind of testimonies like Diego's encourage us to replicate our experience in other countries. We really believe there are many people like Diego in the world waiting for an opportunity. For this, we have designed an international franchise model based on the franchise model we have developed in Chile. We offer a complete support package to help our franchise partners set up their own inclusive and ecological car wash service. We are looking for foundations, organizations related to people with disabilities, also large companies that want to join us with our support to undertake this chance of working together and improving the labor conditions of people with disabilities. Our offer to our franchise partners includes the use and handling of our ecological product together with all the instructions, trainings and processes to implement an eco-friendly car wash service. Also, the great use of our brand and merchandising, all while using a proven quality assurance system in order to achieve the same success that we have achieved in Chile. We, if you're really interested in employing people with disabilities while respecting and protecting the environment, we will be more than happy to help you become a single franchise entrepreneur and be part of this great project. From now, we are attentive to cut to your contacts to be able to share more, de more details of our replication model. I hope today it's the start of something important for all of us. Thanks to the entire Zero Project team, also to Ashoko people and Fundación Descubreme. Let us help together to improve the quality of life of so many people with disability in this world. No more barriers, no more integration, more inclusion, more integration and respect. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. Thank you for this presentation. And it's indeed refreshing to see such a model, right? You operate as a social business, you're self-sustaining, and you achieve both the, the in inclusion component uh, and, and, and the environmental component are, are both embedded in your model. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, we're going to travel a bit further to Brazil. And i um, very happy to introduce uh, Guillermo Braga, who is the founder and the CEO of Egalité, Inclusion and Diversity. Welcome, Guy. Thank you, Loic. Hi, my name is Guy Braga, and I'm the CEO and founder of Egalité. We're a company from Brazil specializing in the employment of people with disabilities. Amanda is 19 years old. She just graduated from high school, but she can't find a job. And the reason is not the pandemic crisis that we're facing, is because she has a visual impairment. And most companies only look at her disabilities and don't evaluate the whole potential. And just like Amanda, there are millions of people suffering from the exact same problem. At Egalité, we develop a technology to unleash human potential, leaving all bias and prejudice behind. We develop a recruitment platform totally accessible for, for all different kinds of disabilities. We provide a full resume with personal data, knowledge, areas of interest, professional experience, data on the disability and accommodation required. 
But the most important part is represented by this graphic where we use artificial intelligence to evaluate the skills and the behavioral profile of the candidates, making a perfect match with the job opportunity. Using this technology, we help to employ over 7,000 people with disabilities in 20 states of Brazil, and we have a database of 65,000 candidates. In our business model, we never charge anything from the candidates. The companies pay for our service. And you may ask, why would a company pay for this service? Let me give you the example of Walmart. We help them to employ 900 people with disabilities. And the retention rates of this group was 50% higher than their retention rate average. By employing people with disabilities, Walmart is saving $15 million per year. We believe inclusion is a process where you need to enable by providing accommodation and accessibility, engage to shift the, cultural, the culture of the company, employ by recruiting and accessing fairly the candidates and empower by providing the right opportunity to grow in the career. At Egalité, we're gonna focus on employ in the impact transfer. So we'll provide the technology to scale to local partners. So we're looking for local organizations that will help us to provide the support for candidates and for people with disabilities on the ground, having the support of this great technology we develop. Our replication model is through software licensing. So we believe this will bring business advantage through the assertive recruitment of people with disabilities. We'll provide a behavioral profile test and artificial intelligence match. Our platform is not adapted, it was built specifically for people with disabilities, providing great user experience. Our technology is flexible and can be adapted for different languages and different cultures. And we also bring 10 years of experience of what we've learned here in Brazil on removing those barriers and bringing the best practices in inclusion. So if you are a company, if you are a local organization or even a government and you're interested in our services, please get in touch to schedule a demo and we'll talk more about that. We believe we have the right to, to scale our project globally and help in the employment of people with disabilities. And you may ask, what happened to Amanda? Amanda registered on our website and two weeks later was working in a local factory near where she lives. She has been promoted twice and now has plans to go to college. And we do this work and we want to scale our business to help people like Amanda, Alex, Roger, Judo, and thousands of others. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre. And congratulations on your impressive reach and impact already in, in Brazil. Indeed, interesting also to bring in these behavioral economics and artificial intelligence components into online recruitment platforms. Um, thank you so much. Going on with our trip and our travel, we're moving from Brazil all the way to Bulgaria and Hungary and Austria. Uh, and we'll be hearing from Eva Solova, who's the co-founder of Jamba. Eva, welcome. Well, thank you very much. Um, just a second. So hello everybody, my name is Eva and we're really delighted the whole Jamba Network to have the opportunity to be together here with you during our very first uh, Zero Conference. And now I would like to ask all of you to imagine for a second that you're really, really talented, highly motivated and also you're dreaming to find that amazing dream job that will make you feel happy and also fulfilled. But at the same time, people will not focus on what you are capable of. They're focused on what you cannot do. And the only reason for that 
is just because you have a disability. We all want to be hired because of our abilities and because we simply can do the job. A while ago, I had the chance to meet this amazing guy. His name is Bobby and he's visually impaired. At that moment of his life, he was unemployed, struggling to find a job, also in the process of moving from the capital of Bulgaria to another smaller city. So you can imagine that his situation was even more and more challenging. But after some consultations and trainings, we organized interviews with different companies. And now he's successfully employed in a big international IT company. Bobby is only one of our many success stories. Jobs are changing and there are skill shortages in the IT and in the AI sector. We want this shift to be accessible, inclusive for people with different types of disabilities and we want to equip them with the skills of the future. Our 360 approach at Jamba builds a bridge between people not only from the big cities but also from rural areas and also with the industry. In addition to that, we have developed an accessible e-learning and job matching platform that help us train our candidates with the digital skills of the future. And that way, we also support companies, our clients, with recruitment and consulting services. We have started our project four years ago back in Bulgaria as an NGO, and now we are working as a successful and sustainable social enterprise thanks to our business model. For this period, we managed to support, to um, build a talent pool with more than 2,000 people. 600 already are trained, but we're mostly proud to say it, that 340 people with disabilities already work thanks to Jamba. We already rep replicated successfully in Hungary, and now we're in the process also in Austria, where we're constantly expanding our stakeholders' outreach. We're, we're sure that our approach is successful and has the potential to support people in other geographies as well. Our accessible e-learning and job matching platform has the potential to support people in other geographies as well. However, we're going to adapt and customize our solution according to the needs of each new reality. The countries in which we want to replicate are Turkey, Romania, Croatia, and Germany. We already have an European trademark for our brand and concept, and our application model will be social franchising with specific exclusivity for our partner. From our side, we'll offer training, transfer of know-how and methodology. In addition, we will set up our accessible online infrastructure into the local language and we'll provide ongoing IT support. As a next step, and after a test phase, we'll sign a social franchising contract with specific requirements and commitments for both parties. There are a few really, really important criteria for the successful replication. And of course, we have also a dream profile of our partner. On the first place, we're looking for an individual or a team with previous experience with people with disabilities and also with an entrepreneurial spirit. We will also need the support of an impact driven investor who understands how important our mission is and who can support our initial development phase. We will also build a network of NGOs, and this will be our initial communication channel with our target group. Right now, we are building the future of work, and stories like the one that I shared with you about Bobby should no longer be an exception. Other people with disabilities can also thrive into the new digital era and also into the future economy. What they need is equal access, joint efforts, and support. And we at Jamba are capable in offering all these things. Our goal until 2025 is at least 30,000 people with disabilities to successfully graduate from our online training program and also to find digital jobs. There is a quote that I really love and it says, potentially is equally distributed but unfortunately, opportunity is not. 
This is the reason why we call upon all of you to join our vision for a future that is inclusive for all and to support our efforts for capacity building of talents with disabilities. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I look forward to answer all of your questions. Please join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eva. Please add your quote in the chat. I, I only heard part of it. I'd love to be able to, to quote that as well. Thank you, beautiful presentation and, and great work. Um, without further ado, we're going to our fourth presentation. We're traveling all the way back to Pakistan and we'll be welcoming Ali Shabar um, and um, Wamik Hassan, who are respectively the CEO and, and the CTO of Def Talk. Welcome, guys. The floor is yours. Thank you, Louis. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our pitch. And let's start with it. Uh, I'm Ali. I am Bamik. Wamik is my eyes because I'm blind by birth. Ali is my ears because I'm deaf by birth. And we are a team, Deaf Talk. We are here to bridge the communication gap for the deaf community. Just imagine you visit to a doctor but unable to explain the pain because doctor doesn't know your language. That's half a billion deaf community facing that particular challenge every single day in their life. And if we talk about the Asian statistics, there's 256 million. In Asia, for 8,000 deaf users, only one sign language interpreter is available. This is a gap which we try to fill it. So I was born deaf, and the biggest challenge was the lack of interpreter in Pakistan. And that's why I was denied the ability to continue my education. I moved to the US for a sign language facility. With the help of interpreter, I was able to complete my computer engineering and return to Pakistan only to realize the problem was still there. And that's why we have built this platform to empower the deaf community. We are bridging this gap by providing online sign language interpretation services through our mobile app, which is available on both iOS and Android platform. We have piloted from Pakistan and now started operations in the Singapore market. Through DevTalk services, one interpreter can easily facilitate 40 deaf users. Here is a screenshot of our mobile app. It's a marketplace where deaf users can easily connect with qualified sign language interpreters via video calling solution. And in order to ensure the quality, we have a feedback mechanism of after every session calls. Through DevTalk services, deaf people can easily access the quality education, employment opportunities, and quality health services that benefit the getting care. In three years of operations, we have rendered more than 94,000 hours of sign language services. We have 19,000 plus active users from both Pakistan and Singapore market. More importantly, we have 1,100 qualified sign language interpreters who are providing that services, and out of which 60 are women who are earning a very handsome amount by sitting at home and providing that services and facilitate the deaf users. Here's our impact metrics. 900 plus deaf community got employment opportunities by using deaf talk services. More than 180 deaf users has been enrolled at the higher education level first time in the history of Pakistan. Now people like women don't need to fly to US for quality education. They can get that education anywhere through DevTalk services. We facilitate 90 calls on average basis for hospital and medical purposes. So in that way, we can ensuring SDGs goals in, in order to provide the deaf users. Here are some unique selling points of DevTalk. One, we are 24 seven available. Secondly, the cost of interpretation is reduced to 65%. So we are pretty affordable for the deaf users. And lastly, we are offering these services to in the six different languages. And when, when we replicate, it easily be adopt the local sign language partitions through adopting the local interpreters. This is our revenue model. It's interpretation services on demand. It's prepaid and cashless. And we are operating in both B2B and B2C domains. Here are some proud partners which we are working for last three years, such as Ashoka, Go and Go, 
Singapore International Airlines, Google, and much more. We got international recognition by winning few international awards. We are the most impact innovative startup of this year in Zero Project 2021. We are the best startup of Asia Pacific by UNDP and City Foundation in the last year. And there are many other awards which we won in the last three years. As we required in the replication model, it's, we would love to license our technology as we are doing, already doing in say, Singapore and Sri Lanka already. So we would love to partner with local organization, particularly deaf people organization and organization who are working for the persons with disability who want to provide that interpretation services. So it's not only for empowering the deaf user, but it's also provide that huge revenue model to the organization for self-sustainability. In just 500,000, we can easily scale to five different markets. As we are asking for a partnership with local organization, particularly deaf people organization and organization who are working for persons with disability. Secondly, mobile network operators in order to reduce the mobile rates or internet values. Lastly, the funders and INGOs organization who wanted to do a self-sustainable project who just not only manage the persons with disabilities empowerment, but also the organizations as well. So in the first picture, we were working in a multinational company, but we had to quit a lucrative job. And the second picture was the first step towards the movement. So will you help us bridge the gap in order to leave no one behind? Thank you. And we would love to connect with you. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Ali and Wamik. Great, great presentation. And this sounds indeed like a very scalable solution that you have developed. Um, thank you so much. Moving on to last but not least, uh, our final presentation for today. We're going uh, all the way to South Africa and um, we'll be hearing from Gary Hopkins, who's the founder and managing director of I Love Coffee. Gary, welcome. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Gary Hopkins and I am the co-founder of I Love Coffee and I hope that once you hear how we use coffee to bridge the gap between the hearing and the deaf, you'll love coffee just as much as we do. In South Africa, we have two million deaf or hard of hearing South Africans. Now you might think that not being able to hear is their biggest challenge, but in fact, their greatest challenge they face is unemployment. And the latest statistics show that 70 to 80% of deaf adults will never find work. The reason for this is it stems from the fact that sign language is not an official language in South Africa. Secondly, across our deaf education system, there are just four deaf teachers. So that means if you're a deaf child and you go to a deaf school, you are taught by a hearing teacher who is probably unlikely to be able to sign. The result is that 30% of our deaf youth leave schools with, uh, who are functionally illiterate and haven't received the skills they require or the education to, to enter a job. That young girl in the picture before, her name is Sam, and I'd like to explain how we made a difference in her life. We offer hospitality training for the deaf, by the deaf, in sign language. Now Sam excelled at primary school, but when she went to high school, she had to attend a hearing high school. And there she was bullied so badly that she was forced to leave school. And it crushed her, not only her dreams of getting an education, but her dreams of becoming a teacher. So we brought her on board and we trained her as a barista. She was incredibly shy. She hid behind the coffee machine and she wouldn't interact with customers. But as her confidence grew, so did, so did her skills as a barista, and she became a trainer in our organization. And after eight months, she left our organization to become a, a sign language trainer. So through us, she realized her dream of becoming a teacher. This is a picture of our cafe, in one of our cafes in Cape Town. It's our central hub. It is home to our coffee roastery. 
It's our central kitchen. And it's also where we train our baristas, our chefs, our front of house management. And more importantly, this is where a lot of our customers come and meet deaf people for the first time. So integration, diversity, and quality is celebrated and showcased here. Over the past five years, we've opened 10 cafes. We have trained 75 deaf trainees. And most importantly, 90% of those have entered the job market or moved on to further studies. So what is our replication plan? We believe we have a proof of concept and we're now preparing to scale. And to do that, we need to scale our deaf trainers and our coffee production. And our impact goal is a thousand deaf youth empowered to enter the job market in three years. In order to do that, we need the support and the partnership of a strategic impact funder who also loves coffee and shares our view. And that funding will use to um, distill and organize our, our current model into, into a very simple social franchise model with the help of an expert that we can replicate anywhere in the world. However, we'd like to start first in Mauritius before we start rolling out. And you might wonder, why Mauritius? Well, Mauritius has an economy very similar to South Africa. Very good point. They love coffee, two good points. But most importantly, uh, the deaf community face exactly the same challenges regarding access to education and employment. So we feel it's an ideal market to, to take a first step outside of South Africa. However, there's an added bonus. Young Samantha has just immigrated to Mauritius with her family. She's been through our training, she's lived our brand, and she's the perfect, we believe, the perfect pilot franchise, franchisee to take us our, our I Love Coffee idea to the next level. Before you go, I'd like to introduce you to, to Tembe. Now, um, integration works both ways, between the hearing and the deaf, and the deaf and the hearing. So if you come into our shop, you don't have to, but our staff love to teach you how to sign for your order. So young Tembe here is gonna teach you how to sign for a cappuccino. And it's really quite simple. You hold your hand up, you twirl your hand above, and you raise it up. And that's how you order a coffee from a deaf person in South Africa. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Gary. Brilliant. We're even learning how to, how to sign language. Thank you so much. Um, this brings us to the end of our five presentations for this session. Uh, I'd really like to congratulate the five speakers. Um, powerful, great presentations. And, and thank you so much for staying within time as well. <laughs> much appreciated. Um, now, I hope you found inspiration in these, in these presentations. And I'm sure you have questions or ideas or feedback or, or other good practices in your geographies or ways to support these five projects. So um, here's the opportunity to do so. We will now um, set up five breakout rooms in Zoom. Uh, so one room for each of the project. And we invite you to join these rooms and just have a follow-up informal conversation. You might want to learn more, share ideas. It's all welcome, it's informal, but we really welcome you to use this opportunity. And all five projects are uh, very excited to be able to continue this conversation.